All right, so I'm going to describe the late stages of the circulatory vesicle uh, pathway. So you can see here from this diagram, there's a trans-Golgi network shown here. And this is the final part of the Golgi network, after which uh, you can see proteins go into their separate directions. Some go to the plasma membrane to be excreted from the cell. Others go to a late endosome, which then binds or fuses to a lysosome. And some will fuse to a lysosome directly. Also, right here through one, you can see that some of the uh, proteins from the trans Golgi network will go to a previous uh, Golgi compartment through re retrograde transportation. Also notice that um, some of these proteins that uh, will go to the late endosome, the vesicles will be coated with uh, clathrin, is shown in red, while the ones that bind directly to the lysosome will be coated with um, just the AP complex, shown in blue. And then the purple here would be the protein coat for the COP1 for retrograde. So the clathrin is uh, this three-legged protein composed of um, at each leg composed of a heavy chain in red and a light chain in blue. And uh, the intrinsic uh, 3D structure of this pro uh, fibrous protein network is uh, shown here in uh, figure B. So you can see it's a, it will enclose uh, the vesicle. And so the way that the uh, that this uh, process works is on the um, so when proteins uh, are bound for the endosome, they um, the budding of the uh, uh, trans Golgi network will form in which uh, you have here um, integral protein receptors bound to their soluble pr uh, cargo proteins and also the formation of this uh, AP complex shown in blue and you also have surrounding the the, um, the vesicle is the fibrous clathrin protein forming this uh, clathrin coat. And for this to uh, successfully butt off, the pinching of the um, vesicle has to be performed by this enzyme called uh, dynamin. And it uses GD, uh, GTP to extract energy in order to carry out the, the pinching off and the successful butting off of the um, completed a transport vesicle to the late endosome and here is uh, uh, once the budding occurs you can see that the uh, vesicle will have its complete uh, structure here where you have the cargo proteins in the interior and membrane and then you have the lipid bilayer of the vesicle and um, outside of that you have the AP complex shown in blue and then the fibrous clathrin coat in red and there was an experiment done where um, a non-hydrolyzable GTP molecule was used in uh, these uh, trans Golgi networks and what happens is because dynamin uses GTP hydrolysis to achieve the pinching off of these uh, um, these late endosomal bound uh, vesicles and uh, because the GTP is non-hydrolyzable non the dynamin will bind to this non-hydrolyzable GTP but it will not actually pinch off the vesicle so you can see here in this um, in this image that uh, the dark uh, circles here are the um, the vesicles the vesicle coats, 
but you can see that they're bound to the surface of the um, trans Golgi network. They don't actually pinch off because the dynamin it um it's not actually operating because it does not it cannot hydrolyze this uh, GTP gamma S. And so you just see that uh, these vesicles are still tethered to the trans Golgi network. And this basically just proves that Dynamin is actually operating through the hydrolysis of GTP on the successful pinching off or budding of the of these clathrin coated vesicles to the late endosome. Another important uh, thing here to uh, know is that uh, there's a uh, some of in the cis Golgi you have these lysosomal enzymes which um, have a glyco um, part to them and a uh, GLC and AC phosphotransferase um, is able to chemically attach this uh, phosphorylated and acetoglucosamine unit uh, using uh, uh, by binding the lysosomal enzyme to the to the um, recognition site and the uh, and this molecule here UDP GLC NAC to a catalytic site uh, once the lysosomal enzyme is successfully uh, bound to the or phosphorylated with this uh, N acetoglucosamine unit um, it, it is available to be transported to a late, late endosome. And so you see here that uh, we have the trans Golgi network here. And uh, this uh, phosphorus group from that modified uh, lysosomal enzyme is able to bind to one of these uh, membrane receptors. And uh, when the formation of the uh, clathrin coated bud forms uh, the uh, these two bind to each other the lysosomal enzyme and the receptor and once the pinching off occurs through dynamin you have this completed uh, three layered uh, vesicle basically with the AP and the clathrin and shortly afterward the uh, coat breaks down and the AP Units and the clathrin triskelions are recycled for uh, uh, to be reused on another uh, bud, and the uncoated vesicle makes its way to the late endosome, where it uh, fuses to the late endosome. And here we have a lower pH, which will favor the dissociation of the lysosomal enzyme and its receptor, and the receptor um, is. Uh, reused again through uh, a retrograde uh, movement of of the the receptor back to the trans Golgi network, or also it could go to the um, plasma membrane. And so, uh, when it's in the plasma membrane, this uh, G uh, M six P receptor could also facilitate the formation of a bud through endocytosis where it will transport enzymes to the late endosome and then the late endosome could um, fuse with the lysosome and uh, you can see that um, the phosphorus group is uh, removed in the late endosome through a enzyme and ultimately that's this is how the uh, uh, lysosomal enzyme reaches its target, the lysosome. And for proteins that are bound for um, extracellular transport, they go directly from the trans Golgi network, but off into the plasma membrane through constitutive uh, secretion. And they do not require clathrin-coated buds.